Kids just sort of learn when violence is happening, so it's like they can smell it in the air. So and it impacts on them and the way they grow and develop. A child experiencing or witnessing violence or hearing violence um, can often then revert back to the way in which they experience that trauma to deal with trauma when they get older. And unless they have access to appropriate help, through their childhood to deal with that trauma, then it's likely that they'll have ongoing issues and experience ongoing um, re-victimisation. What could happen if one child experiences sexual violence of the child, so childhood sexual abuse, so they could at a young age start to look for coping effects in drug and alcohol to escape um, the kind of experiences that they've, the trauma of, and the memories of that, so then that will, could become an addiction. They could utilise um, gambling to try and get a lot more money so they could get away and escape from the situation so it starts to create the addiction there. If children aren't given access to services then the ability for them to heal themselves is, um, is minimal. It's sad to hear that, you know, for us to hear that Māori are the highest statistic of suicides, the highest impacted by sexual violence, the highest number of twice as likely to experience sexual violence or domestic violence. You know, I think it's the overlay of a culture on top of another culture that doesn't allow for Māori people to work within what is tika, what is puno, what is aroha within our own frameworks. So generations of that is what supports the ongoing violence and the increases in the violence and until we actually understand and provide opportunities that lead us back to a pathway that comes from Te Ao Māori then it's going to take a lot longer. Yeah I do think it is one of the root problems in our country. If we um, put some money into, some real money, into actually resourcing and providing healing pathways and developing prevention strategies both within communities, access for families and as a government response, then the likelihood a community or a country, a society with much greater potential is definitely there. But if we don't do those things, then we're only going to look at an increase. Women centres established and developed a, and raised the voice around sexual violence so 30, yep, 30 years ago and the message to break the silence. So 30 years on, we're still looking at that being a priority message. It's a difficult conversation to have because people do think you're talking about sex and you're talking about power actually and oppression. You're not talking about um, sexual intimacy. That's what confuses people, I think.